Hi, I'm Lisa Fletcher, and you're in the stream. Today is the Dutch tradition of Black Pete, featuring Santa's helpers in blackface, a cultural treasure, or racism. Our digital producer, Malika Bilal, is catching all your live feedback. Malika, this story came to us uh, because of an online conversation that was so strong. Black Pete is very controversial and is obviously very polarizing among our community. And we're getting comments from all sides within the Netherlands and without. Elko says, don't judge our culture. It has nothing to do with racism. But Mikey counters, this is the Dutch version of blackface in America, and it has to go. So for those of you at home, we'd like you to join the conversation. Use the hashtag AJStream. And there are a lot of ways you can be a part of the stream, but if you want to join us on air, like these folks behind me, the easiest way to do it is by adding us to your circles on Google+. Do it, and you could wind up in the stream. My name is Johan Galten, and I am in the stream. Santa Claus is a much-celebrated holiday tradition for children around the world, bringing candy and presents and joy. But in the Netherlands, many say it's time to change one aspect of Sinterklaas, as he's known, specifically the character of Zwarte Piet, or Black Piet. Each December, the Dutch celebrate Santa with a parade. By his side are his trusted helpers, the Black Piets. The legend of the Black Piets varies. One story says he was a slave liberated by St. Nicholas. Today, he's a willing servant who takes the presents down the chimney for Santa, hence the black face and hair. Now there are kids' TV programs centered around the Black Pete's and numerous songs, toys, and candies. Black Pete is, no doubt, a Dutch institution. So much so that there's even a Dutch version of Gangnam Style featuring the Black Pete's. Zwarte Piet is dead. It got 4.7 million hits on YouTube. Because of the Pete's stereotypical features, the exaggerated red lips and the Afro wigs, the tradition has come under international criticism for being racist. Most Dutch reject this notion, arguing they don't have the same history of structural racism found in places like the US. But with the Netherlands becoming more multicultural, some Dutch want to change the tradition, raising the question, how far should a culture go to accommodate the changing times? Joining us from Amsterdam are Quincy Guerrero. He is a poet and playwright and founder of Black Pete is Racism. And Bas Heine, a writer for the NRC Handelsblad, one of the most popular papers in the Netherlands. Gentlemen, welcome to the stream. Hi. So, Bas, I, Bas, I want to short with you, start with you. There is no shortage of friction over the topic of Black Pete, with many people staunchly on one side of the issue or the other. But you have a bit of a more um, nuanced position on this issue. Yes, well, first let me say that it, it's uh, only become a, a, such a big issue of during the past few years, I think. Um, and there may be some reasons for that. But I think, uh, I think the original Swarte Pete of Black Pete are obviously racist because uh, everything that comes out of the 19th century and has to do with blacks is, uh, uh, by definition, a bit racist, I think. But I think the question is, uh, uh, is it racist now and is it experienced as racism uh, from the side of the uh, black uh, Dutch people and the non-black Dutch people. So I think um, the issue is uh, a bit more complicated than saying it's the tradition of blackface and it should go. I think it's, it's, uh, I think it's most Dutch people experience it in a kind of, um, uh, you could say, uh, not only in a cultural sense, but they don't uh, have this sense of link between uh, black people and Swarte Piet. So I think that makes it uh, uh, difficult to discuss the issue. Well, many of our community members are also from the Netherlands, and they're agreeing with what you're saying. Mike here on Facebook says, everything that has a racial connotation is not inherently racist. I wouldn't care if a black person painted their face white. I expect to be afforded the same courtesy. And one more from Benjamin, who says, I think that a lot of people here are looking at it from a culturally subjective lens. It's a part of traditional Dutch culture, and if you're not Dutch, you won't understand it. Quincy, is that you laughing? You're Dutch. Do you understand this? Um, it is uh, problematic in a sense that a certain part of the population thinks that it can think for the rest and also speak for the rest. So what you get is that white people are saying black people don't be so sensitive, don't see racism as something that's racist, I'm just trying to be your friend. Um, it's completely condescending. 
and it also takes away the stories that have been told since 1930. There's a documented case in the Khun Amsterdam where a writer wrote there's a problem with the way how we treat the black people in our society today. That was 70, no, 80 years ago. And up to today we still can't find a place where my voice can be counted as legitimate. That's the problem. Quincy, there are, there are a lot of people who would say that we don't mean this to be racist. How much of a role does intent play in defining an act as racist? Could this just be offensive, but not necessarily racist? Um, I find that intent doesn't have anything to do with it. We have to look at impact. What we have in the Netherlands is a sense where black kids are called to right, compete on the playground. Now, some people put it off as just ordinary bullying, but recently we had a case where a young man killed himself because of bullying. What happened was a public outcry, we have to stop bullying. So why can that same response for that young man be used to take away Zwarte which is used as an instrument of bullying? My own mom was called Zwarte Piet by a colleague of her at Wolfport. That's the reason why I started my art project, Zwarte Piet is Racism. Because I wanted to find out why are people clinging to this aspect of something that was in 1850? Why do people want to constantly go back to that period of time when people who look like me were enslaved? What, what is that? And up to now, I haven't found a reason why that's part of it, unless you look at the way how it's connected to the national identity. I mean, Zwarte Piet was introduced two years as a national figure, two years after the new constitution was enacted in 1848. There's a sense of people um, thinking that globalization is taking away their national traditions, while that isn't the case. Bosh, um a lot of our community, I'm looking here at TweetDeck right now, a lot of them uh, agree with what Quincy is saying. Do you think mm -hmm. that Black Pete is misunderstood at all by the international community? Well, I think the problem is not Black Pete. I think in Holland, I think the problem is that uh, after 50 years of immigration, uh, uh, we don't have uh, many uh, Black or of people from uh, Muslim countries that are immigrated and are now in the third generation on um, on, on important uh, positions in society. I think that's a much bigger problem. I, I don't think Svarta Piet is the issue here so much as, I mean, in a balanced society, I think can live with some absurdities from the past and can neutralize these absurdities. But if a, a country lags behind in taking affirmative action for minorities, and I think that has been the case in the Netherlands, and I think with Casey's, uh, uh, with Quincy's art project, I think what bothered me uh, about it was the reactions against it, this, this total defensiveness attitude of, of people, and of course the police, who uh, I think were quite brutal with him, uh, and were totally defensive, and as he rightly says, they, they, they uh, feel that there are, their cultural heritage is attacked or being, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, eclipsed or whatever. So I think this defensiveness, I think that's a real problem. I don't think Swarte Piet in such is a kind of active racist kind of uh, thing, but this defensiveness against uh, discussing these issues, I think, is a problem. And the other problem is, I think, that's, uh, I think the Dutch uh, see themselves still uh, uh, as tolerant and very, you know, and, and, and totally non-racist and colorblind. But I think um, this attitude uh, prevents them from discussing this issue. So I think Swarte Piet should be openly discussed uh, what it is. And I think uh, a country should uh, be aware of, of its, the origins of their own myths or illusions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I myself as a kid grew up, uh, what often is uh, uh, lost in the debate is that you, gr you grow up as a child believing in Santa Claus and believing in uh, Swarte Piet. And at the moment, disillusioned. Well, Boss, you mentioned something, uh, y y your quote, I think, was absurdities from the past. And some people are picking up on that here on Twitter. Kyber just said, this is a tradition, but it's also a deeply and inherently racist one. Traditions are not fixed and should be changed over time. Yes. And someone else I is picking up on that tradition. JM says, this is Dutch culture. So Dutch culture is racist? Question mark. I mean, let's just do away with the old it's tradition card and accept that sometimes traditions can be disgusting. Yes, but you can also neutralize, I think. It's, uh, I'm not defending. I mean, obviously, I said it has, has a, has racist, it's a racist imagery, I think. It's not, uh, the dip, as, as uh, someone has pointed out, that the, 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 dif the difference between America and Holland with the 
uh, is quite quite big, and I think they shouldn't be compared one to one. But um, I think, of course, I think this 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 whole issue of Swarte Pete should be discussed, and this unwillingness to discuss it, I think, is a is a, is a problem. Uh, but it doesn't mean that that there should be a law against Swarte Pete on the street. I, I don't know if Quincy agrees with that. That he sh is because I interpreted his action as a kind of project to make people aware of what Swarte Pete is. Well, before uh, we get to Quincy's reaction, I'd like to go to our Google Plus Hangout because Karen Ataya is waiting to speak with us. Karen is a freelance jour journalist. She's based in Curaçao uh, and is now in Texas. Go ahead, Karen. You might need to unmute your microphone, Karen. Um, sorry about that. Thanks for having me. Um, this issue is uh, a really has been a really interesting one for me, uh, being in Curaçao for the past uh, few months. Um, and whenever the topic of uh, Zwarte Piet and Sindra class comes up, um, a lot of times you get the same reactions that, you know, I'm being sensitive, um, especially as a, a black American being sensitive about race and that I shouldn't be projecting um, America's past uh, on the Netherlands. And one thing that does come up um, a lot for me is, uh, you know, trying to so sometimes explain to people that this character is to Pete with the black skin and the red lips and the curly hair is not just unique to the Netherlands. It's a figure that we've seen over and over in sort of racist imagery depicting Africans and black people all over the world as goofy, as unintelligent, and as incapable of managing their own affairs. So it is something that for people, black people outside of the Netherlands, we have been used to as an image that is mocking and that is um, uh, denigrating to us as black people. And as uh, during my time in Curacao, one thing that I would also like to pose back to Quincy is that um, Curacao is a, a small island, which is 85% um, African descent. It is a former Dutch colony. And I was there and they also celebrate Zwarte Piet. They also dress up as Zwarte Piet. And one thing for me as an American, it was confusing for me to see a practice that so many consider is so offensive, but then seeing other black people dressing up. So that's, you know, one thing that I would, uh, you know, like to see, like to get answers to, because for me, it's, it's, it's really confusing. Good question. So Quincy, is that weakening your argument? Uh, no, it actually strengthens it. Um, Wim Manuhutu, who's a Moluccan, um, uh, a Moluccan researcher, He's done research on photography from Indonesia where you see Indonesians dressed up as Swartipi in the class. Now he argues that the reason they did that was to be more like the Dutch. The more you were like the Dutch, the more you rose in societal capital, uh, cultural capital. The more you became one of them, the more you were less of the other. And that's what happens in Curacao. Curacao, everybody wants to play Swartipi, but nobody wants to be Swartipi. But, but doesn't it doesn't doesn't everyone, change doesn't change to play to be, but nobody wants to be black but doesn't change That's require it. those who are being offended to stand up and fight against it well, no if they're complicit or if they're participating in it is that the Netherlands and people who are born and raised in a Dutch context will also take Dutch cultural concepts with them so to see that this is racist actually takes some learning um, I myself went to school at the comparative women's studies in Utrecht and there I got post-colonial studies, gender studies, cultural sociology, and there I learned to look at images and see images and put them in an international um, context and also an international heritage of images, as was said just now. And Swartipi doesn't stand on its own, and we to argue that also misses the point that the Netherlands had a couple of years ago celebrated 400 years of contact with New York. How else do images travel through contact? Quincy, there's someone here on Twitter who agrees with you. Alev says, the question isn't if Zorte Piet is racist. The question is, do the Dutch mind that it is? And they don't. So long, Dutch tolerance. Uh, I'd like to go now to Google+, Plus because David Kanz has a question. Uh, he's a sales manager in Curaçao. David, go ahead. Hi, good day. Thanks for having me here. Um, yes, I'm, uh, I'm Dutch. I'm living now uh, in Curaçao. And uh, what I find here and also back in the Netherlands is that the majority of the Dutch people uh, they do not find it a race issue at all and it is a lot of the times the minority of the critics who think it is uh, yeah a, a, an image of racism um so uh, against the question you know in the, in the united states you've got the uh, santa claus with his little helpers uh, don't little pussians feel offended by that as well you know so every culture has this different 
uh, you know, signs and, and, and features. And uh, now it's because it's, it's a big group, it's a black people. So, you know, what, why does it always have to be a race issue? As for all these children in the Netherlands, it's just, you know, a great party and they don't even think about it. And Quincy, before you answer that, we just got a tweet from Hint who says many Dutch people would consider you uh, as an other. Uh, so your opinion on who Black Pete is isn't Dutch. Good point. A lot of people have told me as well that if I don't like it, I need to go back where I came from. Um, here in the Netherlands, we have a, a sense where xenophobic speech utterances are seen as normal. Um, what the, what the, 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 the sales manager on Curiosity just now said also comes from a position of white privilege. He gets to say as a white person what is and isn't racist in the Netherlands. Of course, that's ridiculous. So you can check himself. You know, um, Quincy, I want to go back to something that Boss touched on earlier, which was your arrest last year. Uh, you were doing some performance art at a parade, and you started, you were wearing a shirt, Black Pete is racism. Tell us what happened that day, and tell us what kind of pushback you got. Um, well, that day, uh, uh, the art project started on the 1st of June, and what I did is I went all over the Netherlands by art markets, uh, by festivals, wearing this shirt. And people who would come up to me and ask me, hey, what are you doing? Usually this conversation starts in November, December, what are you doing in June talking about Dr. Pete? You're crazy. But it also gave me a way to talk about a subject without people being defensive. So I did that, and as the momentum grew and as more people uh, became fans of the project, wanted a t-shirt, as more people told me, hey, you also need to be standing by the intro. And I was like, hey, that makes sense. You need to be by the place where the crime is being committed. And racism is a crime here in the Netherlands, so why shouldn't I tell people who are doing something racist that they're doing something racist? Well, we went there, and um, police officers saw us with a banner, and they told us, hey, you can't put up a banner here. Afterwards, we found out that was because of the cameras. Mm -hmm. um, they told us, hey, uh, the banners can go, but you can stand where you want as long as the banners don't go up. Um, as we walked towards the square where the entry was happening or would end, um, we stood on the side and decided to just watch. I have never seen the entry in person by myself, so I was like, hey, might as well check it out. We were there together with two researchers as well, and only two of us had a t-shirt on. The two researchers were blonde, blue-white, uh, seeing Venning, a Danish researcher who was doing research on the African and these experiences right to speak, and Stephanie Weber, a journalist student who wanted to find out how people uh, who are against the figure would actually look at an entry. As we're standing there, um, within a couple of minutes, an American student came up and asked us if she could take a picture. Uh, a bit shy, I responded, yeah, why not? She took the picture, stuck up her thumb, and said, thank you. I've been saying this for months, nobody's been listening. Um, as she walked away, within a minute, police officers came up to us and told us we had to meet. Right, and we um, saw, we were just watching actually some video of you being arrested after that, and, and we were told you were arrested because you didn't have a, a permit to protest. But, Boss, I, I know you want to jump in here. I have a question for Quincy. As I said, these, these police, I think there's a, a, a huge defensiveness uh, uh, on this issue from many people in, in the Netherlands, which I find suspect. But uh, I, I wonder what Quincy, what would be the solution for this? Would, would he like to neutralize Swartipit Piet in a, in a, a radical way, say that it's forbidden from now on? Or would he uh, have people be in consciousness of the uh, of the origins of Swartipit Piet and, and neutralize it in a more in another way by not stereotyping or uh, as you now they see many photos of p children dressed up as Zwarte Piet without the black face or what would be his solution? Quincy, is there a way to keep Zwarte Piet alive without him being racist? Well, um, we have to look at the whole figure of Zwarte Piet. From the costume, the page costume, to the black wig, the apple wig, to the red lipstick, to the earring, to the burlap bag uh, where sweets are being carried in and with also colonial transportation uh, mode. Um, it's not a question, I'm not supposed to be the Dutch consciousness. I want to tell people that it's racist, I want to show them why it's racist, and now it's up to the Dutch and for us as a society to realize how are we going to continue giving sweets and candy with a racist energy to um, that's, that's not for me to answer. Well, let's get Ethan Mark in here. Ethan is a lecturer at the University of London, speaking to us in a Google Plus Hangout. Go ahead, Ethan. Sorry, I'm at, I'm at the University of Leiden. Thanks very much for having me. Apologies. Um, 
Yeah, I wanted to um, uh, to bring up the the question of colonialism here. Uh, the discussion has been, I think, too much centered on a comparison with the United States and its history. Uh, Dutch history is not unconnected to that history. Dutch the Dutch have a history of uh, being very deeply involved in the slave trade. The Dutch had slave colonies in the in the West Indies, but the Dutch also had a much bigger colony in the in the East Indies and in Indonesia. The Dutch have a long history of their own racism, and and uh, this is something that's being left out of the discussion when everyone focuses on the United States. But Chen Lo here on Twitter agrees. She says the Dutch were slave traders, and that's a major reason for the heavy presence of African descendants in the Americas. Boss, there are some people that say this is just innocent fun. There are others who say the fact that this is so pervasive in the culture, it's taught in schools, you see it on educational TV, that it's really indoctrinating children uh, subtly into the idea of racism. What, what do you think of that? Well, I don't know. Uh, of course, uh, hardly any fun is all as innocent <laughs> at all. So I think, uh, of course, as I said, uh, uh, of course, the original Swartopedia are uh, are racist, but uh, my problem is that if you focus on Swarte Piet, which for many people, I mean, I don't think people, uh, Swarte Piet is used as an instrument of actual racism in the Netherlands by by, by right-wing parties or whatever. It's not used, so you, c you can only talk about it on a kind of subconsciously indoctrinating level. Uh, but for me, the big problem is why after so many years of uh, uh, immigration uh, and multiculturalism that of course now is uh, being criticized heavily, why there is no, why there's not a, a, as you could say, a black presence in society on, 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 on important levels. I mean, Swarte Piet seems to be not the big issue for me. Uh, and, but there are other issues that should be addressed. And I think the Dutch as a whole have a kind of tendency uh, to, to uh, pr be progressive by, uh, op by their opinions, but not by their actions. So I think that is a basically a real problem that I should be addressing. I think uh, it's very important to talk about Swarte Piet, but if you reduce every problem to the uh, so-called racism of Swarte Piet, I think you're missing the point a, a bit. Quincy, Quincy, how do you change attitudes? How do you get to this bigger issue that Boss is talking about? By talking about the issues that led to his right to speak, uh, among other things. Because um, what Boss rightly says, it's not about the figure. It's about the mentality and the ideology that keep the figure in place. What we have is a situation of white privilege whereby certain members of society are told not to speak up, whereby you can be arrested for having a Negro uh, appearance here in Netherlands. You can be deported, and in, uh, being undocumented means you get a fine of 3,900 euros. What we have in the Netherlands is when I can walk into a restaurant and be asked if I can go upstairs to wash the dishes, because the black people are always seen as in servitude to the rest. That's the figure of short speed. By touching on the figure, you touch on all of these different subjects. And what makes the discussion so difficult for a lot of people is because they realize that they're complicit in keeping the system alive. And that's what needs to change. So I completely agree with Bob. We need to have the discussion carried on and carried further than just a figure, but the figure is the perfect starting point because it shows how willing or unwilling people are to look at their own thoughts and to change. All right. Well, we're going to put this discussion on hold. In the post show, I want to get into this idea that so many Dutch feel that the Netherlands are such a tolerant, progressive, inclusive culture. And there are people that disagree with that, not just on the Zwarte Piet issue, but on several others. So we're going to talk to our guests about that. So stay with us. Uh, that's for the post show, which you'll find it streamed at aljazeera.com. Now, tomorrow, uh, the recent mass shootings in Connecticut, they've generated an unprecedented wave of reactions. Can Newtown unite a country deeply divided over gun control? and mental health care, or will interest fade as it has in the past? Send us your thoughts and your comments on that, and until then, we'll see you online.
Welcome to the Stream's online post show. Today we are talking about the Dutch Santa Claus, Sinterklaas, and his helper Black Pete, and whether Black Pete is a uh, figure that is promoting racism or a traditional part of Dutch culture. And I, I want to pick up, you know, we were talking about how this does or doesn't affect kids because it's such a part of children's stories and lore in the Netherlands. Right, and some people are saying that we're focusing way too much on this. This is all just child's play. Seeker says this is for kids. Kids will not confuse a black with a Zwarte Piet. It's the grown-ups who make a problem. And there's a Facebook comment here from Rob who says, whether or not you're black or white or Asian, from a child's perspective, it's all just innocent fun. You know, there's a, a Dutch TV network, it's called NTR, and they have programs that are centered around Black Pete. This also happens to be the same network in the Netherlands that airs kids' programs like Sesame Street. And we asked them about the show's impact on kids, and they provided this statement for us. They said, we at NTR produce a television program that is for children and based on a Dutch traditional children's party called Sinterklaas. It is not up to the NTR to change a cultural tradition that is up to society. Quincy Gario, does it start with society or does it or can it start with media organizations that have a, a huge influence on the population? It starts with all. It starts with media organizations, it starts with the public, it starts with politicians, and it starts with police officers who uphold the law and don't make it. What happened with me was a question of police officers thinking this guy is here to disturb the party. So we need to arrest them and he's offending them. Um, what we need to have with NTR is have them acknowledge the fact that they don't promote racism, uh, that they will not promote racism, which they are doing. All we need to have is the public realizing what racism actually is. In the Netherlands, we've had a harsh discussion of what racism is and what racist ideologies can bring forth. Um, we have the, uh, the inability to understand that intending to be progressive doesn't mean you are progressive. Uh, boss, there are a lot of people who favor keeping this tradition. They say the Netherlands is such an open, um, inclusive, progressive country that it can look at the mistakes of history and, and laugh at them and not look at these things as racist because they are no longer, according to them, racist. I is that a, a logical way of looking at this? Oh, uh, it would be a good idea, I think. Uh, 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 but I don't think uh, uh, it's the case that people are as far as that yet. But I think in the end, I think it's much better to uh, be conscious of... Uh, are you still hearing me? Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, it's, it's very... I think it helps more to be conscious of your own history and, and, and well, the, the black pages that uh, in your history and to deal with them uh, than to... I mean, there's a tendency everywhere, I think, to to neutralize public space. And, and there's also a discussion of, of, of uh, taking the cross of the, uh, what would you, cardinal's head or mitre, it's called, of mm -hmm. Santa Claus, because he has a cross on it. And uh, people, multiculturalists say we should take that away because it may offend other religions or they cannot identify with the cross. I think that's taking it a bit far. I think, I mean, they're, they're always... Uh, as I say, absurd, cultural absurdities that are still there. But I think you have to be conscious where they come from. And if they are still of offending many people, I think you should neutralize them in a way. But I think that abolishing is, 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 is asking for trouble, I think, because people would feel offended in their cultural her heritage. Which I think, uh, the problem is that it's racist and part of cultural heritage. So I think you should deal with that in, a, in, a, in an open way. Uh, but not saying it's innocent and therefore it cannot be discussed. I think that's the wrong attitude. Mm -hmm. It's not innocent, but it can be discussed. Well, an interesting uh, view here on Abian on Twitter who says, I grew up in the Netherlands and center class, it's word to Pete, was always fun as a child, but as an adult, I see the racist elements. I want to go to Google Plus now because I know that there's a follow-up from Karen. Karen, go ahead. Sure. Yeah, on the uh, children uh, explanation, I hear that a lot, that, you know, why spoil the fun for children? Um, it's just an innocent thing. And look, let's be real. Kids are kids. We don't care, you know, when we're five, where the candy and presents are coming from. We don't care if the person is blue, green, red. We just want candy and presents. I think what people do not understand, or what me as perhaps a non-Dutch person and a black person doesn't understand is why that character has to be black. Why does he have to be um, Zwarte Piet? And from what I uh, understand, there was a, a move to try to make Zwarte Piet red or green or just multi uh, multicolored, and that wasn't uh, received very well in the Netherlands, and they went right back to the black Piet. So what I don't understand is why uh, in the Netherlands, and even to a certain extent in Curaçao, is the figure of black Piet 
held on to so tightly. Bas, you want to try to wrangle with that one? Yes, because I think uh, people don't see it as a real thing as is, if it's painted with a green face. But uh, I, I don't think this link between... Uh, you must remember, when I was a kid, I believed in... You very strongly believe in the realness of, of Santa Claus and Swartje Piet. So you, you think they're real. Uh, in the end, uh, when you discover it, it isn't real, you're, you're always afraid of, of Santa Claus, because he's the one who me measures out the punishments. And you identify identify with Swartje Piet in a much more way. In the moment you discover that, uh, that, that he isn't real, you want to be Swartje Piet. And uh, people in their own homes play Santa Claus. And usually there's an uncle who dresses up as Santa Claus and all the nephews and nie nieces are dressed up as Swartje Piet. Uh, and and as, I, as I've said many times before, of course, the, ra ra the image is racist in original. But I think in this setting, it isn't blatantly racist, or uh, I think it's overstating it a bit to say that it's still used as an instrument of oppression. I think that's that's going too far. Mm -hmm. uh, Quincy, putting Black Pete aside, how uh, how divided are racial communities in the Netherlands? They're pretty, really divided. Yeah. yeah. What, what you have in here in the Netherlands is uh, um, uh, what Bas Heine recently wrote himself. Uh, uh, where he wrote that uh, this is a parliament where there is not one single person from the former um, colonies in the parliament or in the cabinet. Uh, it's, it's completely ridiculous. Um, the, we have it uh, uh, pretty tough here when the only institution that was dealing with Dutch slavery uh, legacy was defunded, literally defunded. And what we have is other institutions who are saying that, uh, uh, or what we have with the, the government itself saying that diversity isn't an issue anymore. We shouldn't be paying attention to it. Um, we're, we're, we're deluding ourselves and thinking that we don't need to talk about our past. It's painful, so we should talk about it. All right. On that note, we're going to wrap up the show. Thanks to all of our guests for joining us today. And we will look forward to seeing you for tomorrow's program when we're going to talk about the recent mass shooting in Connecticut and how it's generated this unprecedented wave of reactions. And we're going to ask the question, can Newtown now unite a country, the United States, that is deeply divided over gun control and mental health care? Or is interest going to fade in this as it has in the past? So send us your thoughts and your questions regarding that, and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.